how is living in Tulsa, Oklahoma? Is Tulsa, Oklahoma a good place to live? Is Tulsa, Oklahoma a bad place to live? These are the questions that I often get asked when people are just starting to research the Tulsa, Oklahoma area. What's Tulsa, Oklahoma like? So in this video, we're gonna get right to it. I'm going to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly, what it's like living in Tulsa, Oklahoma, if Tulsa, Oklahoma is a good place to live, and what Tulsa, Oklahoma is like. I'm Sabrina Shaw. I'm a local real estate agent here in the Tulsa area. I make videos about living in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the good, the bad, the ugly about Tulsa, Oklahoma. I do that for you guys, for people thinking about making that move here. Whether you're thinking about moving here in nine days, 90 days, nine months, just like tipping your toe in, like exploring the, you know, exploring the area, exploring your options, reach out to me, send me a text, give me a call, schedule a Zoom, send me an email. You know, you'll talk to me, you'll talk to somebody on my team, but we would love to show you around town. Let's go ahead and start with the bad. Now, in my opinion, there's definitely way more pros than there are cons, but I told you I'm telling you the bad and the ugly. And then if you make it through all the bad points and you're still interested in the move to Tulsa, then make sure and stay and you can watch all the good stuff. So con number one is that your median household income is lower than the national average. And the time of recording this video is 16% lower. That's definitely something to note but our cost of living is lower and our home prices are lower. So take that into account too. And with remote work being on the rise, that's not necessarily an issue for everybody. And you also might check out Tulsa Remote. I did a video over it. Um, there's a program called Tulsa Remote that will pay you $10,000 for moving to Tulsa and working remotely. Con number two, tornadoes. Yes, we get them. If you live here, you're going to be in a tornado watch. You're gonna have a tornado warning. Like it's just going to happen. Uh, Tulsa gets tornadoes. Um, you're gonna average about three a year. The good news is they aren't really severe. You know, for the most part, they're not the catastrophic ones. F0 to EF0 to F2 to EF2. So, you know, for the most part, those are what mo most of our tornadoes are. Now we are part of a tornado alley here in Tulsa. But like the Oklahoma City Moore area is the area that experiences a lot more of those devastating tornadoes. Very, very sad. Another good thing about tornadoes, not that there's a good thing about tornadoes, but as far as natural disasters go, we do have a good amount of warning time. So we'll have tornado warnings. You'll be able, you know, for the most part, you'll know to be able to take cover. You'll know, you know, not to get on the road if you can. You know, that's definitely a plus. There are tornado shelters. Now, the Tulsa area doesn't have a lot of basements. You wouldn't go to your basement for a tornado because there's not a lot of basements. Now, Midtown Tulsa does have some basements, but for the most part, Tulsa area isn't going to have basements. So people have storm shelters. If you can hear that pitter patter, that's my puppies. If I put them up, which I have to sometimes, then they're just, they're gonna whine. They, they pitter patter. Okay, so I think probably, I don't know the statistic, I don't know the exact statistic, but I would guess maybe one in 10 people have a tornado shelter and that might be high. There are several reputable companies that can come in and put a tornado shelter in your house if you wanna take cover. And you know, this can be anywhere where they have like, can fit four people to where they can have, you know, 10 people or more. So they can, you know, they can be huge. And there's underground ones, there's ones that you stick in your garage, and there's ones that you, you know, pull up and go down into your garage. And a lot of the new construction houses, they don't, necessarily put the storm shelter in there but they cut it to where if you have a storm shelter added it's easier for the installers to put that tornado shelter in and i think you know the cost on that you're probably going to be spending you know eight thousand to fifteen thousand dollars now i've lived here for 35 years and i've never had a tornado shelter have i taken cover yes i've taken cover and when you take cover you're taking cover in an inner room you know that doesn't have windows or mirrors you know somewhere in the center of your house but where you have you know walls around that's the advice if you don't have a storm shelter and they tell you to take shelter and then you know like you lay down you cover your head i always just have a helmet with me that I, I have put it on before, but I don't unless, you know, you start hearing like winds and things, which I haven't. So that's the guidance, but a lot of Oklahomans, I would say more than half of Oklahomans probably don't follow that guidance. 
uh, we might be as high as 70%. And are you gonna, you know, gonna go and look out the windows and try to, you know, try to see the storm? Now, if they actually see the tornado approaching, yes, they're going to take cover. They're going to get in their storm shelter. But, you know, during the tornado watches, tornado warnings, you know, a lot of people just are, you know, on their porches looking or just, you know, living their day to day life or just doing what they were doing, like really paying no attention. You're gonna hear a lot about Travis Meyer and you're gonna hear a lot about the storm chasers. If you have public TV, which a lot of people don't have anymore, but if you're watching public TV, uh, Travis Meyer is going to interrupt your show uh, because weather is exciting business around here and tornado season is exciting business. So you are going to be, you know, Travis is gonna be on there. He's gonna be talking to the storm chasers, you know, talking about the path of the storm and your show will be completely interrupted. It's actually a pretty big production. Okay, con number three, Tornadoes is part of weather. Well, our weather is con number three. So I always say like our summers are hot, hot and our winters are cold, cold. But when I was actually doing a weather video and doing research, uh, our winters are not, um, our winters are classified as, you know, fairly mild. Now it's cold. We're gonna get under freezing, you know, several, several times. We might get below freezing a few days a year. It's windy here, so our wind chill, our wind chill is cold. But you're not going to be shoveling snow all the time, and you know we'll have some warm weather mixed in. So we are classified as mild. So you know, actually, a lot of retirees are choosing to go to the Tulsa, Oklahoma area because of the mild winters, uh, because they're priced out of you know Arizona or North South Carolina, uh, Florida, and you can buy an affordable home in the Tulsa area. So I was talking about our humidity to them and telling them it was really high, but they said it's nothing compared to Florida. So, you know, just keep that in perspective. And I know, you know, areas in uh, Texas have higher humidity too, um, but it is humid. So when I go to outside, I've never really, honestly, I've never really noticed it. I mean, I guess you sweat, um, so it's not a dry heat, but it's nothing that, you know, bothers me. Now in the summer, am I just out all day? No way. Uh, definitely, you know, not doing that. I'm going to go into the air conditioning. You know, I'll be outside, especially, you know, the mornings and the evenings, you know, are very, very pleasant. Um, but for the most part, you're gonna be in the air conditioning. But you do have, you know, the hot summers and the humidity. Your next con is crime. Uh, you look at Tulsa's crime rate and it is high. It's higher than the national average, it's higher than the state average, and it's, you know, considerably higher. I feel very safe in Tulsa. I feel completely safe in the surrounding suburbs, which don't have, you know, that same high crime rate. But, you know, there's areas of Tulsa that I'm going to stay away from, that I'm not going to go in. And, you, you know, you find that is, you know, there's areas with pockets of crime. But Tulsa is definitely higher crime rates. There's the first 48 is a show of actually I don't think I've ever watched it. I might have, you know, had it on for something. I know what it is, um, but it's a show and there's, you know, episodes in Tulsa. Uh, so it's definitely, you know, the crime is definitely real, but you just, when you're out, you watch your surroundings, you know, you're in places you're comfortable with and just be aware. And, you know, just to give an example of the safety, so there's a small town, called Kiefer. I actually just did a video on it because I'm doing some videos on small towns that you would never even research. And you know, a few years ago, it was named like one of the safest places in America. You know, you're basically 25 minutes from Tulsa, 20 minutes from Tulsa, depending on what part of Tulsa you're in. So, you know, just be aware. Your crime rate is higher, but it's not everywhere. And I feel safe. I would always take my kids outside. I'd take them to the parks. Uh, when they were younger. Of course, crime has increased since my kids were younger, but my friends with young kids, you know, still do the same thing. And again, if you are getting value from this video and this is making you, you know, want to know more about Tulsa or want to keep watching, you know, hit that like button uh, and subscribe. That way you'll be the first to know what's going on in our Tulsa area. Always feel free to leave comments. Tell me what you'd like to see, what you'd like to see more of, what you'd like me to stop doing. Do read your comments and pay attention. Another con is our roads. Our roads are not in the best shape, especially in the winter when it's super, super cold. You and we have like a winter storm, like the roads do not hold up real well and so you will get potholes and sometimes they can be really bad and sometimes, you know, people are getting flat tires. Like there have been a few times that have been crazy. I don't remember if it was last year or the year before, but one of our streets was absolutely, Kenny, come see me. I know. 
Can you come say hi? Can you come say hi? <gasps> you got your little collar. Yeah. You got your cute little collar on. All right, see I'll ya. Be back in a little bit. Penny does not want to say hi. But there was this road and it was crazy. I mean, it was like you were on a racetrack, like, you know, trying to get past all these obstacles. Um, maybe more like a game, <laughs> like a, I want to say Nintendo game, but I don't even think Nintendo is a thing anymore. Um, but yeah, it was crazy. Uh, they'll fix them, they end up fixing them, but it stinks. Okay, another con is our public transportation. We do have some in Tulsa. It only goes, you know, specific places. So really, if you're gonna be in the Tulsa area, you need to have a vehicle. And you know, I've been in New York, I've got on the subway, I know that you have to travel that way. I wouldn't use our public transportation system personally for myself here in the Tulsa area. Another con uh, is nightlife. So if you're somebody that you know wants to be going 24 seven, uh, wants access to everything, you know, 24 hours a day, a lot of places close. A lot of places have evening hours. They're gonna shut down at like nine or 10. You have a few fast food restaurants that will stay open, but not very many. As far as bars and clubs and things, I think things usually shut down around one o'clock. There's a couple of casinos, those might be open longer, but for the most part, you know, one, two o'clock, it's going to be your shutdown times. And that's gonna be, I think Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, Monday through Wednesday. I'm thinking maybe like 11 or 12. That's something that, you know, I need to research is how late things are open. So your nightlife, I mean, to me, that's fantastic. Like, that's great, that's perfect. For some people, you know, that might be a deterrent. Okay, meeting people is another con. Oklahomans are super friendly. All my clients that come here, you know, when they're getting out and they're talking and they're going to restaurants, they're like, oh my goodness, the people here are so nice. When they're going to the parks, super nice. But it can be hard to like make people meet people and make friends to where you know you go through like nice high on the streets to where you're like who do i hang out with so finding your tribe can be a little hard tulsa remote has a great infrastructure for you know getting people to know each other and get together so you know if you're part of that that's fantastic and you'll know, definitely meet people through that but there's like a church on every corner and churches are big so you could get to know people through church. I invite you guys to Life Church. There's several Life Church campuses. I get to the one in Jinx, but there's life groups that you can get in depending on like if you're single or you know, if you're married with young kids, if you're married with older kids, you know, there's all different kinds of life groups to, to get in so you can meet people there. And you know, you usually get to be really good friends with those people. And then there's um, volunteer opportunities through Life Church. So you don't even wanna to go to church, you don't have to, but if you just wanna get involved in some volunteer opportunities, they have great volunteer opportunities that you could get, do too. You know, the Gathering Place has opportunities to volunteer, SPCA, you know, so there's volunteer opportunities that you could join where you could meet people. One of my clients from California did that. She got involved with, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it was a nonprofit that, you know, would see dogs that were just on leash, or not leashes, um, chains, like day after day after day, and, you know, trying to get them adopted from their families since the dogs aren't getting any attention or they, they were basically just stuck living that sad life. And so she met a lot of people doing that. Another con is our airport. Now, it is a super cute, charming airport. I'm gonna talk about it in our pros, but as far as direct flights go, we do have them and it is an international airport, so yay, yay. But, you know, there aren't a ton of direct flights. Like a lot of times when I'm traveling, and I travel a lot, you know, I'm detoured to, you know, Dallas uh, to do a connecting flight. Okay, our drivers. When, it's, when there's snow or ice, stay off the streets. Like, please, stay off the streets. We do not know how to drive. I do not know how to drive in it. I do not want to be out on the roads in it. I drive super slow. Some people will drive like crazy fast thinking they have four-wheel drive and it's just, it can be a mess. So when it's snow or ice, which is few and far between, but it definitely happens at least usually once a year, try to stay off the roads if you can at all. Okay, we've just got a couple more, but I'm trying to, I told you, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm telling you everything. And you know, if this is valuable, if you like hearing all these little things, will you hit that thumbs up? Will you leave a comment so I know you're listening? When I look at how long, you know, people are watching my videos, I'm trying to get a little bit more entertaining 
some of you guys, you know, watch all the way to the end. So I love that because I know I am not that interesting, but I am trying to give you guys more things to make you want to stay on and make you want to watch. So if these are helpful and you like all these little cons, please give me a comment or tell me what you'd like to see more of, you know, just something I would, I'd love to know that. And I have been asking lately and you guys have been doing it. So I appreciate that. Okay. Allergies. Allergy season is super bad. Knock on wood. It's not for me, but you know, for my family, for my sister, for my sons, allergy season is crazy. So the pollen, the different trees, the grass, uh, the ragweed can be crazy. So you could develop allergies here. Or if you have some allergies, they could be super bad at certain times of the year. And the last con, which has been recent in the past few years, is our THC shops. I do not know what happened with Oklahoma, but we passed medical marijuana and there are so many THC shops now. Like, it seems like everywhere. Like, almost as many THC shops as churches. I think that's an exaggeration, but there are a lot. So, that those are our cons. Now, I'm gonna tell you why Tulsa is amazing. Okay, now the fun stuff. I am going to tell you why Tulsa, Oklahoma is a great place to live. Uh, I'm gonna tell you the good about Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm gonna tell you what it's like living in Tulsa, Oklahoma. All the good parts. Okay, our cost of living is low. With inflation and everything, it's not as low as it used to be, but compared to nationally, we have a lower cost of living. And that goes right into our housing prices. Our housing prices are lower. The average home price in Tulsa is $280,000 right now. And you can get a you can get a nice home for 280,000. Not necessarily super updated. There are some new construction homes in that price range in certain areas um, for 280,000 you can get a good home. And holy cow, the houses that you can get in Tulsa are crazy. So, you know, when you're spending a little bit more money, when you're in that $500,000 price range, when you're in that $700,000 price range, and that million dollar price range, I think your socks are gonna get knocked off for what you can get. I mean, it is gorgeous. I have real estate friends all across the United States. So actually, you know, if you're thinking about moving to Tulsa and you're wanting to sell your house, reach out to me because there's a chance that I probably have a super great real estate agent that I can recommend that would be amazing if you don't have anybody. But they always, you know, when I'm doing my stories and doing home tours um, on social media and they see some of the houses, they're like, oh my goodness, like it's beautiful there. And you know, what is that, what, you know, what is that price on that house? And they're just floored. Now I will say some people have the expectation that it's going to be, you know, that's going to be super, super less expensive than it is. I mean, we've definitely had appreciation here, but still comparatively to what you can get in a lot of other states, like what you can get here is phenomenal. Okay, we have great entertainment. Uh, we've got the Performing Arts Center. We've got the Tulsa Ballet. We have the Tulsa Opera. We've got the BOK Center, which has a lot of concerts. Concerts from people that are really, really famous. I am not a music person, but like Chris Stapleton has played here, uh, Zach Bryan. I'm pretty sure Carrie Underwood played here. Let's fact check. Let's fact check, shall we? Because Carrie Underwood is from Oklahoma. We get the Siberian Orchestra. So Carrie Underwood's played. There's some rock people that have played too. Madonna, Iron Maiden, Tool, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Eric Church, Ariana Grande, Green Day, Coldplay, I don't know who that is, Mumford and Sons. Now, I will tell you, I'm not a big concert person. I would rather go to patio where there's live music playing, something more, you know, conversational. When I go to concerts. I usually end up falling asleep. This was a concert in Austin when, we were, when I was with my friends. I think it was Cody Johnson and I fell asleep. So I usually, I usually do that. <laughs> and actually even when we're at the ballet, sometimes I fall asleep and mainly it's just because of the time. You know, I wake up at 4.15, so I really want to be asleep by 9.30. So, you know, if, it, if it's late past that, it's hard for me to stay awake. Okay, the yeah. Oklahoma is business friendly. So it is, you know, usually ranked in the top 10 of business friendly states. And we pretty much know we have our freedoms. 
We are a, con a conservative state, uh, so that might be a con for you, but generally, you know, more local control, you know, not big government. And that's a draw for a lot of people. Oh, on a con, I don't know how I missed it, but I forgot to tell you, Tulsa Public Schools are not fantastic. And a lot of them are very, very poorly rated. There are some that are nationally rated. Uh, there's some magnet schools that do really well. We have some fantastic private schools. Tulsa Public Schools is, you know, is definitely, um, if you're gonna be moving in Tulsa and you have kids you wanna be in public school, you need to be aware of that. But there's also, you know, some great homeschooling options and like I said, private school options. Back to the good stuff. You know, back going to entertainment, you know, we've got the Tulsa Zoo, we've got the Jinx Aquarium, um, so cool, where you've got like this shark tunnel and you can walk through like when you saw, it's not like when you saw Jaws, it's not that crazy, but I mean, you see sharks going overhead, it's pretty cool. And the Tulsa Zoo is super adorable and charming and I love it. When the boys were little, I used to take them, like we'd go three or four times a week, like get a season pass and they made friends with all the animals and it was just a good fun time. Dining is another pro. Like we have amazing food guys. If you're, you know, coming to Tulsa, I've done a video letting you know what to expect if you're gonna be viewing houses in Tulsa. Tell you to come in, enjoy a day or two, but to get a feel for the area, then you know, look at houses with me for a day or two or three, and then have another day where you're enjoying everything that Tulsa has to offer. And I'll give you a guide of you know things to do and restaurants I recommend. But we've got Andalini's pizza. Oh my goodness, so, so good, so, so good. You can go there during lunch and get the lunch buffet so you can try, you know, different slices, but oh my goodness, they, um, Andalini set a world record in the Guinness Book of War World Records for people, you know, eating the most pizza at the same time. You know, they had it at the, um, I think it was at the Tulsa, the TU Stadium, but the owner, uh, he travels everywhere to bring like the authentic pizza taste, you know, back to Tulsa, Oklahoma. So it's incredible. We've got Hemingway's, which is like a speakeasy, Bull in the Alley, which is like a speakeasy, super good, uh, you know, steaks, sushi, we've got in the raw, we've got Yokozuna. Uh, we've got some fabulous Italian places, Cicero's, uh, Caribbean, um, you know, so many different uh, genres of food that are delicious and local. You know, of course we have the chain. You know, I prefer local over a chain any day. Although it's my mother's birthday. My mother's birthday was yesterday and her favorite restaurant is Cracker Barrel. So my sister and I are going to Cracker Barrel for dinner this evening. Okay, hey, Oklahoma, the Tulsa area is, you know, pretty clean. I'll go some areas and I'm like, oh, you know, there's litter, but you know, for the most part, like when I'm driving, doing my driving tours or when I'm doing my vlog tours, Oklahoma, you know, is very clean. You know, that's the one thing that I love about the Tulsa area is like you go into, you know, the different suburbs or almost each neighborhood and they're so, you know, well-maintained, uh, pride of ownership, taken care of, you know, it's really lovely. So Oklahoma is a clean state. We have a good economy. Now, Tulsa used to be known as the oil capital of the world, and so our economy was highly reliant on oil. Well, there was the oil bust back in the day, and that really hurt, you know, Tulsans. That really hurt Oklahomans. So Oklahoma and Tulsa has been diversifying their economy. Uh, so now we've got, you know, there's, of course, it's still a big oil and natural gas state, but we also have, you know, a lot of aerospace. We've got a lot of clean automotive. There's like the clean automotive corridor or the electric automotive corridor. Um, so a lot of self-driving cars and businesses like that are coming to Oklahoma. There is healthcare, technology, education, patient, IT. So our, you know, our economy has really diversified and, you know, the state does a lot to, you know, bring companies to Oklahoma. Okay, comparatively to almost every single person I talk to, they love our traffic. Like you can get basically anywhere from Tulsa in like 30 minutes max. If you're in Tulsa, it's gonna take you 20, 30 minutes max to get anywhere. There are high traffic areas. We have rush hour. I try to get you traffic videos sometimes and just don't get stuck in traffic very much. Is that because I know ways to go? Possibly, but I've tried to take ways that would be, you know, high traffic and it's just not that bad. And so there's Memorial that's horrible right now, which I stay off of it. Um, 
you know, so when there's construction, you know, there's definitely some bad traffic areas, but people love our traffic. I mean, you can, you can literally get anywhere in you know, 30 minutes uh, less than that. I live, you know, in one of the suburbs further out. So like to get all the way, you know, through Tulsa, across town, all the way to the other side, you know, might take me 40 minutes, but that's going to like a far suburb. So it's very easy to get anywhere. We have amazing spring and fall weather, like the perfect patio weather, you know, where you wanna go out and, you know, have brunch, uh, sit on the patio, have cocktails, have wine. Absolutely beautiful. They're not long enough in my opinion. Not in my opinion. They're not long enough. Like it's not a full three months of fall. It's not a full three months of spring. Usually we have that perfect weather, you know, for four, four and a half months. But oh my goodness, when we have it, it is lovely. We have great festivals and events. Uh, Oktoberfest is very well known and so fun. One of the best Oktoberfest. We have Tulsa Tough. People come from all over the United States to uh, ride in our Tulsa Tough race. And that's downtown and the energy there is crazy and so fun. And crazy not in a bad way, like crazy exciting. We've got Mayfest, which is like a local art show uh, that's downtown that's really fun. And you know, we've got Winter uh, where the downtown you know opens up they have a big tree uh, they have an area where they put an ice skating rink and that is absolutely fabulous and then of course all you know you've got your little small towns that have their little festivals Glenville has their you know black and gold festival uh, Broken Arrow has the rooster days uh, Bixby has the Bixby corn festival lots of little festivals all around there are so many parks and you know recreational activities we are by so many lakes like just you know within 30 minutes you know there's keystone lake there's sky took lake an hour you've got eufaula uh, you've got grand lake an hour and a half um, but lake life is so fun so you know you can do boating you can do fishing you can camp get on your sea dues and it's a fantastic time our parks you know i told you we have the tulsa zoo which is fun but then like we have the gathering place which has been ranked America's best park. It has, it's a best world attraction, like the top 10% TripAdvisor, like ranked it in the top 10% of world attractions. And it is like, that'll knock your socks off. It's just, it's so fun for kids. It's a great place, you know, for adults, like to go for a date, to go by yourself. You know, you can walk around, you can work in the lodge and it's totally free to get in. Uh, it was the biggest private donation for a park in the United States ever. There is money to operate the park for a hundred years so it doesn't fall in disarray so that they, you know, so that um, it can be continually taken care of. And it is taken care of like it is a country club. I mean, uh, you know, the mission behind it was to, you know, the gathering place, bring people together, but you know, not, um, doesn't matter your economic circumstance, like, you know, just come and enjoy this world-class place and it is amazing. And then we have, you know, we have tons of other great parks too. Uh, we've got Woodward Park, which is beautiful. The Fortune Park is fantastic. You know, there's the Botanical Gardens, which you do pay for that. Um, and that's more of entertain entertainment. So tons of outdoor recreation. You can you know, go to Turkey Mountain, you can go hiking. Then there's also, you know, um, day trips that you can do to where you can go a little bit farther out and go hiking. Just went to, you know, around Wagner and it, I think it was Sequoia State Park. There's Quartz Mountains. There are a ton of places that you can go um, to go hiking. Woola Rock and Bartlesville. So many places to be active and be outdoors. Like I said, you can go camping, fishing, hiking, you know, swimming. There's some, make friends with someone with a swimming pool when it gets hot in the summer. A lot of like lifetime fitness where, you know, I work out where I go and work out and do my yoga. They have, you know, they have a pool inside, they have a pool outside, which is great. Um, a lot of the cities have pools, uh, tons of splash pads around. And then you can swim, I mean, you can swim in the lakes too, which leads to boating. You know, all those lakes you can boat and it's so fun. You know, that's one of, the, that is a fun thing to do in the summer is, you know, just get on a boat, listen to the music, hang out, you know, just go on the waves, it's fantastic. Another pro is we have low property taxes, like our medium property taxes are low. We are friendly here. If you come here and you're anywhere, um, you know, you're at the park, you're at the grocery store, you know, you're at a restaurant, people are gonna be nice and they're gonna be friendly. And like, it's just our Southern, you know, we're a Southern state, but Midwestern and we have like, we do have this great charm, like we're nice, we like people. 
want people to feel welcome, we want people to feel happy, you know, we're gonna say hi, uh, how you doing? And then if you just move here, you know, get into those groups so you can make good friends. Okay, and I told you the schools were negative and negative, but our surrounding suburbs, like so our top suburbs are, you know, Bixby, Oklahoma, Owasso, Oklahoma, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, and Jinx, Oklahoma. Those are some of the top schools in Oklahoma. So those are great public schools. And then we've got uh, Monte Casino, Casha Hall, Holland Hall, uh, Lincoln Christian, Metro Christian, you know, lots of uh, private school options, there's charter schools, you know, and then there's, you know, great homeschooling options. So, you know, as far as schools go, you definitely have choices. I told you, like, our winners are classified mild, fairly mild. So instead of, you know, moving to those states where it's like a very nice winter, which I definitely see the appeal, I would love to, December, January, pack up my bags and go to Arizona. Um, but relatively compared to, you know, different parts of the country, it's considered mild. And our housing prices are cheaper than like very fair weathered states. Uh, I talked about our airport. It is an international airport. It is, you know, very small and cozy and charming. You're not going to get lost in it. You're not going to feel overwhelmed. Um, you know, people are going to talk to you. So it is a nice airport. You just don't have a ton of the direct flights. Uh, we have some great museums and art. We've got Guthrie Greens, we've got art shows, uh, you know, we've got the First Friday Art Crawl uh, downtown. The Philbrook Museum of Art is beautiful. The grounds are amazing. It's lit up now, so it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, they'll have movies on the lawn. They'll have, you know, cocktail events. Um, burger night, $5 burger night. Uh, great time there. The Oak Priest Museum is amazing. Uh, we've got the Bob Dylan and Woody Guthrie Center. Uh, we've got the Jazz Hall of Fame. And so we have a ton of museum and arts. And actually I had somebody reach out to me that was a poet uh, and a writer and wanted to move to Tulsa for the scene and enlighten me on actually how big that was here. I have another con. I've got my notes right in front of me. Um, another con that I forgot to say is our high-end shopping. Now there's not going to be a Louis store. There's not going to be Chanel. Uh, we have Utica Square, which is our high-end shopping area. You know, you've got White House Black Market. You've got Saks Fifth Avenue. You've got Coach. So, you know, Utica Square is kind of our Rodeo Drive. And it is nice. Like, it's in Midtown. It's so quaint. Like, on Thanksgiving, you know, they'll turn the lights on and Santa will be there. And Super cute, charming area, uh, you know, to go and take your kids. We have, you know, Summer's Fifth Night, movies on the lawn there. I've done a video uh, over Midtown and, you know, highlight Utica Square because it is such a great place. But, you know, that high-end shopping we don't have. You have several options of videos that you can watch uh, about Tulsa. I go through neighborhoods. I go through our surrounding suburbs. I've done map tours. So take a look. Uh, reach out to me. It's never too early and I'm never too busy. You know, you're either gonna talk to me, you're gonna talk to somebody on my team, but nine days, nine months, 90 days, it doesn't matter. Uh, reach out to us and we would love to show you around.